Good afternoon. Uh, in this video, I am going to critically reflect on a class that I taught to BBA Section B students at the Little Angels College Hattiban, which is affiliated to Kathmandu University on last Wednesday, that is uh, November 30th, 2022. I'll play the video and wherever I feel like reflecting or saying something, I will pause it and I will reflect. I'm tired because I already did one reflection earlier for two hours and you can see me yawning, but I'll move ahead. Here we go. Uh, this is November 30, 2022, Wednesday, and we are in BBA Section B, and we have presentation spray. So let me invite the first presenter, Risha Marlon. So as usual, you can see I begin my class by mentioning the date, date, month, and year so that I can easily refer to or such required video from YouTube channel just by watching the first two seconds. And uh, one thing that draws my attention is the cluttered writing on the whiteboard behind me. Uh, I started the video camera on my mobile phone after having taken the attendance. Uh, I should have cleaned the uh, whiteboard before I started the video camera. Or uh, I also wish that the teacher who taught me before this class uh, should have cleared the and cleaned the whiteboard before he left the class. Let's move ahead. So a day before, I had assigned uh, presentations to various students on the additional readings from chapter two on education. And now I'm uh, calling each student individually to make a presentation on what they were assigned to. We can see an excitement among the students. They are clapping. So whenever you invite students to make presentations and involve the students in the classroom, they like it, as you can see here. Sorry. Darling, tired of Huh? You sleep for three hours. You haven't done why? Just a minute. Why? Okay, what, before actually, uh, I wish we had two cameras, one that focuses the teacher as well as one that focuses the students so that we can cover both sides of the classroom for our reflection. Actually, when I invited this student to make the presentation, he was reluctant. He was reluctant to come up for the presentation and I sort of, forced him to come up for the presentation and he is not willing to make a presentation and now you will see that gradually uh, my temper my temper <laughs> I, I i i lose my temper as you can see he says sir i haven't prepared the lesson and now look as you can see I instantly get angry. If there is one thing in my class which gets really on my nerves, it's my students who come to my class without doing the assignments and without doing inner preparation. I am demanding, I realize. And in this sense, I do not make compromise. 
my students have to meet my expectations at any cost. <clears throat> you can see I'm speaking Nepali. I said, Alitao. Uh, this happens. I have observed myself and I found that I switched to speaking Nepali language in my English classroom whenever I'm emotionally moved. Look here, I switched to speaking Nepali because I'm extremely angry. And I sometimes reflect and ask myself, why do I tend to switch to Nepali language when I'm angry? And the only reason I can give to you is that I do not have the language command to express my anger in English because I did not learn English uh, by living in an English is among English speaking people in an English speaking town. So I do not have very good base in colloquial English or spoken English. Um, uh, I learned English by reading uh, novels, by listening to BBC or Radio Moscow over radio where I often got formal English. So when I get angry, I do not know how to express my anger. And I easily tend to switch to Nepali language to express my anger. <laughs> you can see my face, how quickly my face became serious. Did you hear this? You can see my stern voice and stern face. Present whatever you can. Look, you can see my face. I'm quite angry. I'm quite angry because the student has disappointed me. I had assigned him to prepare this essay a day before. I had reminded multiple times in class not to skip the presentation and be sincere. Now I see that this student is not sincere and he has come to class unprepared. Now, as I reflect and watch myself in this mood, one thing that comes to my mind is that probably my reaction response to this student is not good. If you think from the perspective of teaching and learning as a teacher, I should not have become angry with my student. I should have known how to handle this thing in a constructive way. This is where I need to learn how to manage my anger, how to control my anger, and how to handle unexpected situations in my classroom. It's not a good thing to find that when I meet something unexpected, I lose my temper. That's not good at all. There's no second chance. Exam is exam. There's no second chance. Now look, the student is asking me to give yet one more chance and is asking me to present next time. And I'm sternly asking him to go with the presentation. I'm saying exam is exam. Yes, I told them that because your college decided not to go with written midterm examinations and asked us to go with continuous assessment, I decided to use these presentations as a way to uh, evaluate for you for your internal max. So I'm insisting uh, on making the presentations with him. No. Look, I'm angry and I spoke Nepali. No. You must do it right now. You can't get a second chance. Now, as I watch this student, I feel kind and I feel loving to him. And I'm really sorry for being so rude to him. Dear student, if you're watching my video, please forgive me for being so rude to you. Now, in my reflection, I realize that this rudeness should not be a part of a teacher. A teacher should know how to handle such situations in a loving and careful manner. Sorry for this. <laughs> Look what I say. I, I behave like military commander in my classroom. I do realize that I'm like a military commander in classroom. In my classroom, either you do or you die. I do not have a third option. I am very demanding and I require my students to be sincere and hardworking. You can read my face. I'm quite angry and feeling uneasy. Take it seriously. I said take it seriously. The exams do not come first. There is a, there is a, there is a saying. There is a saying. Now look, my anger is rising. Now I'm, I'm coming back and trying to say something to the students. My anger is not subverting, it's rising. Saying, parties come and go. Parties. 
party dance party like that. Parties come and go in life multiple times. Grades come only once in life. What I said, parties come and go in life, but grades come only once in life. That's very true. A student will not take the same examination twice in the same class ever in their life. And they will get, they will be graded only once for an examination. So they should take it seriously. Parties they can do again and again. I'm not happy with the students' uh, carelessness regarding preparing the presentation. Never twice. You can see my face, my eyes, my expression. You will never take this English exam second time in your life. And the grades you get, they are one and final. But parties, you can take even next week. I can Always see my students' face here as I, as I watch this video. And, and I feel really bad because this student, I can see, is feeling not good. And it's because of me and my behavior. And I do really realize that I shouldn't have misbehaved like this with this student in class. That you take things seriously. Okay? Look, when I, I said, when I get angry, when I'm emotionally moved, I switch to speaking Nepali language in class. And you'll be surprised if I tell you that this semester class started in August, I guess. August, September, October, November. In four months, this is the first time I speak Nepali in class. This is the first time. Oh God, I said Marvanesi Marsa, Garvanesi Garsa. I'm demanding. If I ask my student to do something, they must do. And I believe that if my students uh, follow my instructions at any cost, if they work hard, if they do assignments regularly on time, they will develop, they will grow, and this will ultimately benefit them in life. What do you think? You can comment on this behavior, and in the comment box, you can please put a views whether my behavior is acceptable or unacceptable, or if you were there, if your student came to class without preparing, how would you handle the situation in a constructive way? <laughs> You can see my face, how angry I am still. See my analogy. I compare students with army recruits and I compare the teacher with the commander. And when the teacher says fire, the recruits have to ask no question, they have to fire. <laughs> I don't know how I developed this attitude. I don't think this should be a proper attitude in a classroom. What do you think? How would you deal with such a situation? Because I feel that how you teach in a classroom is influenced to a large extent by your teaching philosophy. And many people say that I'm perfectionist and I demand perfection. I work hard myself for my class and I demand the same hard kind of work for my students. As I watch this video and see the face of my student over there, I'm feeling uneasy here because I have this guilt feeling that by being angry in the class, I created a difficult situation for him. But you know, at the spur, at the at the at the spur of the moment in the class, when when the flow of the class is going on, we don't. We are not aware about such things. Bawa Pasina Bagara, Dukagara, 
लाखों रुपया कॉलेज लाइफ फीते रखे को लगी पढ़ने लगी वही ना ऐसे मौज मस्ती कर रहा मतलब मौज मस्ती कर लाई ऐसे ना अपसेट सो अन पढ़ने पड़ता प्रेजेंटली जे सब तेज कर रहा जे सब जो तेज कर रहा लुक माय इंडेक्स फिंगर पढ़ने पड़ता गर में पड़ता जे सकने पड़ता गरा नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम मेरे बाने देरी कड़ा सा now this is student because he has prepared nothing. What is he doing? He is simply reading the text. He was born in in 1939. After he was born. Sorry, After he was born in 19, 1939, he has changed his his six course in five years. Five years. When you can see my face the over there. United I'm not State, feeling comfortable. He made um, Miss Hart. Uh, that teacher was very nonsense. No nonsense teacher. When he come to USA, he was undersized, nine years old, wearing a short pant. He is describing how he came to America, how was he when he came to America in 1949, right? Does anyone know the story? Now, I'm frustrated and uh, I want to replace this presenter with somebody else. And I'm asking if anybody in the class has gone through this story and I find that nobody's read. This, this is a sad scenario. I often face in class. When I assign a reading, you will see that most of the time, most of the students come to class without reading the assigned text. Have you gone through? You can come and tell us the story. Now look, I say, because you cannot do anybody can come and tell the story. Thank you. Now, I, I'm so frustrated, so angry that I just let him go. Please understand, I will grade you accordingly. Ah. I sternly say, as a student, understand that you will be graded according to your performance. There's no second chance. Now, as I watch, mixed feelings come in my mind. On one side, I say what I did was okay because... A teacher should be strict in class. He, a teacher should not compromise on performance. A teacher should not compromise on a standard. A teacher should require the students to meet his standards. That's how they will develop. On the other side, I feel that maybe I should have dealt with this student mildly. Maybe I should have tried to understand why he couldn't prepare. I should have asked him if he had some difficulties at home. He might have had some problems at home related to his family and parents or something else. I did not inquire for the reasons he was not able to prepare the class and got angry. Now I realize that it was inappropriate. I should have asked a student in detail why he couldn't prepare the class and then only taken my decision. What, what would you have done if you were in my place? Please judge me, criticize me, and comment on what I did in this class. Look, I'm still angry. I say, I haven't slept throughout the night because I have a class to teach this afternoon. You were sitting Yes, I had not slept because I had a class at the university and I spent the night preparing for the class. Yes, my wife was complaining what didn't you sleep. My son was complaining what didn't you sleep. But I had a class and I told them, if I sleep, who would teach in my class? This is what a teacher's life is. We spend nights sleepless preparing for the classes. And people rarely see this side of the teacher's life.
Yes, he wrote a message in Messenger. Don't behave like a child and please have sleep. Now, one thing that I happens, I, I reflect is, I, I often bring family things in the classroom. For example, right now, I mentioned what my wife said to me last night and what my son said to me last night. Uh, this happens with me time and again. What's the case with you? Do you ever bring family affairs as examples or, or for any reason in class? What do you think? Should a teacher bring family references in the classroom or not? Why yes, why no? What are the I read all night, made slides, read them twice, twice, and highlighted necessary points. Read again. Now I'm ready to teach. Um, I'm translating this Nepali version, uh, in Nepali part in English for my viewers who do not understand Nepali. I could have slept all night ignoring the class, but I didn't ignore my responsibility. I said it's my duty, I should take it seriously. If I tell you study, you must study, there's no excuses. Look my face, how angry I look. Very true. Their parents are paying seven, eight hundred thousand rupees for their education, and these students are being careless. You have spent one and a half million rupees to come to the college and you are so careless. Your parents sent you here to materialize their dreams. I too have my son. He got educated in, in KU. He is so hardworking. Again, I bring my family affair to class. Look my anger. Right? 
मेरे जिंदगी मेरे हो मैं करियर बनाने पर्च मैं मेरे वाइफ हो हस्बैंड हो फैमिली हो मैं होल फैमिली प्रोवाइड कर मैं अर्निंग कर मेरे बुआ में गए मैं मैं घर बना पर्च कमा पर्च सोच रहे हो लाइफ रोक तब बुआ में मैं के चमचा खाई रह तब के बुआ में अरब पत्ती भाई लेख रख कि तब के बुआ में तब सदैं बोक हिड़ेन तब आप खुट्टा में उपिए सात दुई बेस को तीन बेटे पास पढ़ना दी ना बड़े क्या लाजन बिगड़ आँच क्लास में शरम लगे लज्जा भी कुछ सकते यो मैं गाली कर क्लास में आर बी पढ़ने विद्यार्थी पढ़े भर गाली कर खेत कर अरु कुछ मेरे मेरे सामान लिया भाई है बजार में तब पढ़ने नपढ़ी आपने so uh, you see how i'm angry and how i speak nepali so much how i bring my family stories to them and uh, the kind of things i said if you were in this situation if your student fail to meet up to your expectations in class if he came without preparing for class how would you react and why I found that only one child says that this I've gone through. But disappoint never on me. Do not disappoint me. If one thing that really hurts me in class is when my students disappoint me. मतलब एक दिन हॉर्ड फील होने बने को विद्यार्थी ले बने को काम नौ कर दा मत टॉलरेट करने सके ना. मैं एक डिमांडिंग छू तई सके मसाद डिमांडिंग टीचर छूँ मैं डिमाण बड़ी कर ये कर मेरे बानी कड़ा छइट म रिशाऊँ गाली कर हप्काऊँ क्या भाई तब हो राइट हो कि मैं हप्काए भाई मेरे लिए हप्का हो समझा मेरे लिए समझा तब समझा को मैं बने को फलो कर आज तीतो लग्ला रिस उठला चार वर्ष पच्चीस तब ग्रेजुएसन करने थे मैं थैंक यू सर भन्न तो दिन भन्न कि सर कड़ा कर हप्का मैं ये भाई भन्न न बताए पास वर्ष बच्चा सो मेरे बानी दे विल टेल अबाउट मी म सब कुछ सहन सकु विद्यार्थी ने आपने पढ़ाई को दायित्व में इग्नोर कर मैं सहन सक एंगल बन तो मुझे बिगा दिव पढ़ा आगे मैं रिशार पसंद कर ओके गो भाई डोट वरी जस्ट कंफर्टेबली टेल द स्टोरी नाव आई सी दैट I spoiled the mood of the class also by getting angry. Uh, maybe I spoiled the learning environment. I don't know how this child will go on in the class now. The story was written by Nicholas Beer. He was a refugee who shifted to America to live with his father. And he, with his sister, his mother was tortured as she was sending him and his sister. to america in order to live with his father he was meeting his father first time in his lifetime so he was bit uncomfortable in the first and he got admission into a local school and the principal of the school kept uh, him and his sister in a mentally restarted classroom as they were a non english speaking students and during that time in us there were no facilities for those who were not able to speak english And so he, uh, Nicholas, developed himself and got be- uh, better in studies as well as as he learned English. So he got transferred into a better school, and that school was a bit high standards. And one day, every student in the school were told to select a club. And being a refugee, he was unaware about the term club, so he followed the most beautiful co- girl in uh, the class. Ah, this is so funny. He didn't know what's club, so he had a beautiful girl in the class. And he said, "I'll follow her, right?" What I can see, my mood changed because the student is presenting, and I'm happy. When students perform well, a teacher feels satisfied and happy in the class. Yes, go on. And he, he landed on. And when the teacher is happy, the child too is happy, as you can see. Newspaper club where he met Miss Hurd. Newspaper club, club, right? Yes. 
Ms. Sard, uh, and she was a, a coordinator of the newspaper club. And in the first day of class, she aware every student that if they were not ready to take challenges, uh, they will not be able to take the club. But uh, Nicholas uh, took the challenge and uh, stayed in the club, which changed his life forever. And one day, uh, uh, Miss Hurd, uh, Miss Hurd assigned every student to write an essay. And Nicholas was given the, uh, to write about his mother and what happened to them back in their hometown. Nicholas didn't want to remember what he experienced in the past, but however, he gathered all his courage Carl and wrote how his mother were tortured and beaten. Yeah, he when she. This was a very emotional story, right? Yes. Trying to skip him, uh, him and his sister. After submitting the AC, he wished to never see that AC again. But he saw it without the consent of uh, Nicholas, published the AC in school articles as well as submitted it in a competition sponsored by Freedom Foundation. Uh, in that competition, the essay won first prize. And after that, he realized that the importance of written words. So he promised himself that he will go back to his hometown and find out about his mother criminal and write about it. And during his last year of college, he wrote about his Philippine friend who lost his life. And through that essay, he, he received a uh, uh, flag from president in White House. He, he got national award by the American president. And he was called the White House for dinner. Mm. As the time passed, uh, his father also died. And when his father died, he also he got an old photo of him receiving flag from mm. president. Let me, let, me, let me correct here. Uh, when Nicholas Gaze was awarded by National Prize of America and Gaze went to White House and the photograph where American president was giving the award, that photo was published in local newspaper. And Gaze's father, he clipped the photograph, laminated and always kept his coat pocket. And wherever he went, he said, Mero he would say everybody. He was so proud of his son. And when his father died, on the last day of his life, the photo was still in the pocket. So can you, can you make your father so proud? laminate Court ko gozi ma hal nuncha, ra toll chine kela dekhaya ra. Ye mere chora ho, ye mere chori ho. Isto kram ro kam kare ban nuncha. Isto kam karnu parige. Pora bandra pade ano baana. Exam lekhen baana. Gaze le kya karo? Gaze le itti kram ro kam kare ki American president le prize dinu wa. And the prize dekho photo, patrika ma sapio. Baole patrika wada port. Again, I spoke Nepali and I wonder why I switched to Nepali. The only reason I can give is when I'm emotionally moved in class, I happen to switch to Nepali language. Pride कि बोली आम्र बुआ मावलाई आमी प्रति प्राइड होस मेरो छोरा मेरो छोरी बनेरा मलाई आपना संदर्भित प्राइड छो देखो करे ऐसन मेहनती सम छोरे पे लॉ में डिग्री करे और अमेरिका तीन महीने के बारे फर्क रहा हूँ देशर तांत Again, I bring my family at first. I mention my family members, son and daughter in the class. I do so because these are the authentic examples. Not fake examples. What do you think? Should a teacher talk about their family members in classroom as an example or not? Why yes? Why no? Right? But again, I realize that I'm comparing uh, them with my children. And sometimes I feel that such comparison is may not be appropriate. It may offend the students. I have this realization. Nagarnus. 
That is what we can learn from the story. Yes, go on. And during all his lifetime, Miss Hurd was always behind his back, mm. supporting him. And he often tells everyone that if it wasn't for Miss Hurd, he wouldn't be where he is now. And after a few years, he received a call. From, it was from Miss Hurd, and she requested him to deliver a eulogy at her funeral to his if he couldn't receive. Eulogy. Eulogy is. Uh, ah, she, she, she mispronounced the word. I corrected and I could see reaction, right? <laughs> now, as I reflect, I wonder well, I, how I should have corrected her, right? I realize that sometimes when we correct students in front of their, their classmates, they will feel comfortable. Speech that you read out in praise of a person who has died. And you read that speech on the occasion of their funeral. If I die, will you write a speech for Deva Krishna? And come to my funeral and read. Deva Krishna told you, right? Nicholas Gays could teach her again. Her Gays of a Morsuke Samema, Mamore Pachi, Malaja Batia Gar Sarila, Tiatimi Aunu, and in Mirlagi, Eology Timle Pordinu, and Gays the Pira Vine to do her well. I'm a teacher, Lema Marsu, Mamur Kavamur, I'll die, very well, I'm a Ramal Lagani. Will the eulogy Polina? Will you get your essay? Will you give up? This is my eulogy. Other sons are the Polinas. Yes, to go to Lekans. I'm a teacher, very well. Gazely Marjorie heard go eulogy Lekoy. The Tiagar Polina, Sons are the Polina. Look, Gazely, I'm a teacher like Koti Ramro. Reward you, okay? Return, I will pay my bill. Guess the you history in the hair boy, as I made Marjorie Hardwell tap on the room. Guess made Marjorie Hurd immortal. Great students make their teachers immortal. Yes. So the moral of the story is how a random decision can change your life forever. Ah, uh, how a random decision can change your life forever. Tio Tio class mo gaye pachadi club kyo tha thi na ani kunu club ma jani pe ni tha ba na ani ke bani beautiful kiti yo cha Ramre kiti yo buddhi man pe ni valang yo Ramre ko pasi lagye bani Ramre vala var lagye bani. Pe tabe pe niya Ramre ko je pasi lagne wala pe jis to bani hoyda Ramre ko pasi lag Ramre var and that girl took him to newspaper club. And Marjorie trained him into a writer. And today, the New York Times is a Republic Sounds. Republic Sounds. Oh, Tesma, Gays, Copin, New York Times. When online, Google, New York Times, and article by Nicholas Gays. Yes. If there is one person supporting you, you'll always. Uh... Have a better life. Ah, if somebody supports you, you will have a better life. Yes. Who is supporting you? The the teacher, Marjorie Hurd, supported Gaze even after his college days. She would come to his home. She would invite him to our home. She would dance. She became a family member, like a family member. Who is that? Teacher, what do you think? Teacher, the class problem is not enough. Teacher le, bidyar thale, amne chora chori chora maya gorsa. Tio order like kya khasoti hai, usko le maya gorsa. Kya nusta? College se kya pasadi pani? Tio guest sanga usko jodi le khati. Ghar ma jaane, bhet ne pura kani gorne. Lai, usko toh mujhe dare relation. Tei baar teacher hone sohi lo sahi na. Not any everyone can become a good teacher, right? Teacher bani ko ek kisam it's an effort to become God. Yani only God takes all round care. Man is good, so we can get a god level. But a teacher will go put on a matter of winner. So we could have a calculated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is, um, this is a point to celebrate. A nice mood. Students are happy, and this makes me very happy that this child, you see, she does not speak often. She's a silent girl, introvert girl. And by looking at her, you would never realize that she is so. Uh, intelligent and prepared and now i can see that those who didn't speak much but she's ready with the class
When your students perform well, you are so happy. Oh, you can see my face changing. I'm smiling now. demanding rigid strict do or die back option See my analogy. So, your philosophy in personal life, I see to a great extent, shapes how you teach in class and how you behave in class. I will tell you briefly about the teacher who changed my life. I came to study English language for the first time in grade 6 in 1979. Now I'm trying to relate this essay with my life and I'm trying to speak on this topic as a teacher from my side. I was not very good in English. I was an average student. And I passed school, high school, in 1985. And then I joined grade 11. And in grade 11, I met an English teacher who changed my life. This is the real story. The teacher who changed my life was named as <coughs> Lakshman Prasad Srivastava. He was in his 50s, I guess, when he came to teach me. He would often, he would often hold his book like this under his arms, like this, and he would walk to my class. He wore simple worn out gray pant and simple check shirt on the jacket and one thing i could never understand was he would always keep cheating something i'll always see this movement and i wonder what's there inside his lips i never knew and he what he did was he told us in the class to make a mini copy he said Larko, Meaning of people now, he would speak both Hindi and English in class. So what we did, we would meticulously write all the words and the meanings in the copy. I will get, get by heart all the meanings. Now, I was not very good in English at grade 11, and I was poor in grammar. I wanted someone to help me in grammar. So what happened? Some boys from my class said that they are going to uh, uh, take tuition with him at his home. There was a group. And then I also wanted to take tuition. I did not have enough money to pay. And I could not convince my father. But then somehow I asked my father, I want to take tuition. He agreed. And I joined the tuition in the evening after college. I will bicycle to his home and what he, he would sit on a katiya bed he would sleep on the bed we will be on the floor I buy a Boston bottle like Kali floor and yeah 
मैं तो बाहर क्लास पास करने में चले दस क्लास पढ़ने में चले अंग्रेजी पढ़ाएं आज तो मैं ले दस मांग रही थी पढ़ाई को साथ ही पर चार बेहतर संगी पढ़ाएं हमने मत थोड़ा मैंने फर्स्ट में थी अने आज अब उसे इंडिया में गवर्नमेंट टीचर्स हो महिला टीचर्स हो मेरे बारे में पढ़ाई करने महिला अक्सर उन्हें ग्रैटिट्यूड देखाऊं चल दही तो पहले से माले तो बारे में पढ़ाई � रामरो टीचर ले कुछ भी जीवन बनाऊं शक्ति मालूम था चाहे तुम्हारे जीवन में कुत्ती जाना रामरो टीचर फलों पार नहीं आया नो तो मलिक जाए घरे रामरा टीचर फलों पार जाती चाहे लाइफ राइट दैट्स द स्टोरी अबाउट माय टीचर हु चेंज माय लाइफ एंड आई बिकेम अ टीचर यो स्वाल चाहे कोई मैं दूसरों टीमों पढ़ाने पढ़ने में ना क्लास हो मैं लाल बेरी पढ़ाया सु अजय पुरी बुझा सही हूँ तो अलग क्लास में अगर पढ़ा रहे निश्चित बच्चे मुख्य नहीं बुझ गया हर एक दिन मलिक पुरी जब मैं पढ़ाया मैंने तो पढ़ाई सही बच्चे क्लियर नहीं बुझे टीचिंग इज़ द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव वे ऑफ ल तो आप सेकंड मैन से लगा लो तो लो वो उनसे आम रूप तो ये क्वेश्चन दिन बात ही जी मैं यो और के ऐसे में कौन होंगे आम रूप तो लो आ लेट्स टेल द स्टोरी ऑफ ऑल अमेरिकाज कल्चर लास्ट वी हैव टेन मिनट टाइम करो सांड ऐसे से Feel comfortable, relax with your girls, don't feel it. Nothing to worry about. Her friend was preparing PowerPoint slides, and as she started presenting, she was not ready with these slides. When you are using PowerPoint, so now I'm telling them that if they are using PowerPoint, they should come earlier. They should get everything ready before the presenters come. I'm telling them if you have a presentation. Come on time, check the venue, check the equipment, check the machines, check the laptop, computer, if everything is okay, ready, and uh, 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 do a rehearsal before the actual time, and uh, um, prepare your slides and, and projector everything before you start the presentation. Again, I have venue check, visible check, equipment check, and the action after slide, all of play on ये प्रिंट करने आते हो, ऑडियंस बोलते हैं ऐसा, स्वाइड बीच से है ना, अने मिशन ले काम करते हो, जैसे एम्बेल से बोलते हो, जो आप मिशन चलाओ नहीं हो बने, मैं तो समझा, कोई ले आ रहा, कहीं फायर करने के, अब बढ़ती चल जाए ना, बढ़ती चल जाए ना, लैपटॉप ले काम करते रहते हैं ना, पीजी कभी का� This is the first time I spoke so much Nepali in class, right? Yes, yeah. actually, in the last four months, this is the first time I spoke Nepali in this class. And it's because of that first student who came to class without prepared. And he made me so frustrated, so angry. Because he made me really angry today. And I... Now, as I, as I watch, I see this is really scared. I see that C2 is scared because of my previous behavior, and this is not good. I don't know how to school in this language. Now I'm changing the position of my tripod to cover the uh, 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 projector screen as well as the presenter.
It's good to see that she has prepared slides. But I see a problem that in the recording, the white aspect is not very visible and clear. One thing I see, uh, as you can observe here, uh, we can observe a problem here. This student seems to have copied these PowerPoint slides from some online source. There is too much text. What she has done, she has brought the summary and uh, she's reading from her notes. And there seems to be no relation between what she's showing on the projector and what she's reading. This is a drawback. If you're presenting, make sure that your slides have not more than six words per line and not more than six lines per slide. Use minimum text and clear pictures. Another thing, can you see this child is reading just by looking on the page. She is not having eye contact with the audience. She is not having non-verbal communi non communication. She is not making body gestures. There is a lack of coordination between the presenter and her friend. Sometimes the friend uh, uh, shows irrelevant slides. I should say that this was not very effective presentation because uh, she read from the notes and she showed a text. The text on display seems to have no connection with what she's reading. And as I reflect, what I realize is that I did not train this student for presentation. I should have given her some time. I should have taught her how to make the slides more effectively. So I should say that if her presentation is not up to the mark, the responsibility goes to me as a teacher. It's because I could not prepare her. I, 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 will, I should say that next time I invite a student to make a presentation, I'll make sure that I give her time to prepare and I coach her, I guide her, I train her so that she makes a better presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just give a couple of ideas to what they have presented. Just a minute, I'll I'll add some ideas to what she said. 
I wish I had a camera person in my class to help me film my class. I do everything. I'm a teacher. I'm a camera person as well. In chapter 2, if you see this, this chapter opening paragraph, it says that it's about goals of education and the problems of education. So this essay focuses on problems of education in America, particularly high school education. Particularly the teaching of history and the problem with the teaching of history is that the textbooks they are not good. Why? Because the textbooks talk only about the white people. American history books in high school they describe white people and they tell nothing about the ethnic groups who are ethnic groups like for example they tell nothing about the red indians they tell nothing about the afro americans they tell nothing about the asians I don't know. I and the argument she makes is that America was made. I have a technical difficulty with my camera, the mobile. It has autofocus and it keeps blurring and being clear. I don't know how to help, how to solve it. So great. Not only by the white people, it was made great even by the non-white people, immigrants. But if we get and see close example, for example, if you see in paragraph four, for example, see names like for example, uh, 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 Bing, she names right. She names W. E. B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass, right. Simple example, and then she concludes that we need to revise. The, the curriculum of history, we need to revise the curriculum of history so that the curriculum becomes inclusive. Right now, the curriculum is exclusive. What does it mean? It explicitly, it excludes the stories of immigrants. The curriculum excludes stories of immigrants. It excludes stories about Asians. It excludes stories about Chinese. It excludes stories about Koreans. It doesn't have stories about the, the Afro-American people. These are not given. So they must also be included. As it ends the race of this time. This is the problem of education in America. The curriculum is lopsided. The curriculum is lopsided means it, it tilts towards the white people and doesn't tell anything. The same is true in Nepal. It's an argument. People say, oh, we are Malaysian people. Uh, Nepali history does not respect Malaysian people. They say that Malaysian people are ignored, marginalized. 
and Nepalese history doesn't tell their story. The same is Limbus. Limbus say no, this is Brahmin's history, this is Chhatri's history, this is Aryan history. Never people say the same thing. Or oh, Nepal history is more only about Brahmin Chhatri because they were in power. Kings were Chhatris, Shah kings. So Brahmins, Chhatris were in power, so they wrote the history and only they tell about themselves. And Nevar said, no, we want a Nevari for this. Taman said, we want Tamsalim. Kirat says, we want Kirat Pradesh. Madhesis have got Madhes Pradesh. Why this is happening? Because everybody is struggling for their identity. So in American history also... As I, as I watch myself here, I, one question I have is, do students learn anything when they listen to a teacher speaking like this? Please write a view in the comment box. The identity of the white people is accepted easily, but the identity of the immigrants, ethnic people, is not accepted. And because this right is poor in herself, poor in immigrant, poor in American, so she's saying, though my skin is yellow, I'm American. American does not mean white skin only. This, that is a racist thinking. Another thing I do realize is that I did not go through the lines in my presentation. I do not have much time, so I am covering the essay in a quick manner. So, as I now, now I'm cool. Now I'm realizing my anger reflecting in the class. The world will watch this video. We we have we tell the students very very transparent. We have told this we have an agreement that we'll film the class and we will upload this on YouTube and we'll we'll publicize on Facebook and we'll let the world see because we have the philosophy this semester that there should be transparency. Our classroom should be so transparent that even the guardians should have a chance to see what's going on in the class and the world, anybody, all the taxpayers, guardians, and anybody in society should be able to see the classes. <laughs> Uh, now my realization has come. Forgive me if I offended you. Thank you. Now, uh, is complete. Let me wrap up by saying that the the remarkable thing I see in this class is that for the first time in the semester, I spoke Nepali and I spoke so much Nepali, I got angry and this this anger must have offended my students. And I do realize that I did not properly handle the situation. I should not have become angry with my students. I should have handled the situation in a careful way without offending my students' feeling. That's all I want to say. And please, if you watched, uh, do leave your comments about what you think about this class. Thank you so much.